One of the reasons I love living in North Carolina is that we are located in a temperate climate. That means we get to experience all four seasons throughout the year. Right now, at the beginning of October, we're going into one of my favorite seasons. Do you know what that is? That's right, we're going into autumn, and some people also call it fall. Besides looking at the calendar, we can make observations in nature to let us know that the season is changing and that we're going into autumn. What are some of the changes that you've seen around your home? Maybe you've noticed that there's different birds coming to the bird feeders or in your neighborhood. Maybe you've seen flocks of birds flying south for the winter like geese. Maybe you've noticed that the daylight hours are shorter. The sun comes up later in the morning and sets earlier at night. And maybe you've just noticed that the temperature is a little bit cooler right now. One of the things that's easiest to observe and let us know that the seasons are changing and that we're going into autumn is that the leaves on the trees around us are changing color. And that's what I'm going to talk with you about today. My name is Renee Sterned and I'm the state coordinator for Project Learning Tree here in North Carolina. And I'm going to be walking you through one of my favorite activities from the Project Learning Tree K-8 Activity Guide to use this time of year. It's called Signs of Fall and it's activity number 78. The leaves on most of our native tree species are green and that green comes from a pigment in the leaves called chlorophyll. So it gives that really pretty green color like we have on our hickory leaf here, on this oak leaf and on this little maple leaf here. So most of the year, the leaves that are on our native trees are this pretty green color. And again, that comes from chlorophyll. However, as autumn progresses, that chlorophyll begins to fade and we start seeing pretty yellows, like this maple leaf and this locust leaf, as well as oranges being displayed in leaves in autumn. And this occurs because that chlorophyll begins to decrease in the leaves as the temperatures cool. These carotenoids, these yellow and orange pigments, are present in leaves all year round. However, you just don't see them because they are being hidden by the really strong chlorophyll. But again, that chlorophyll starts to fade, so the carotenoids are present. There are two families of carotenoids. Our yellows are the xanthophylls, like this maple and this, loco, this locust leaf. And then we have our carotene pigments, which are orange, that are being exhibited in this maple leaf. We also see other colors sometimes in the fall as well. And these are really pretty reds, like in these maple leaves, and also purples like in this ornamental plum leaf. And those reds and purples come from anthocyanins. And those pigments are usually not present in leaves year round, but they form from a chemical reaction within the leaves that happens when temps drop and photosynthesis starts to slow down. When we have really cool temperatures in the fall, that can mean the best fall color show. However, an early frost can really cut that show short because it actually kills the leaves before those colors develop in the leaves. So again, the colors that we see in our leaves are the chlorophyll, those greens, the carotenoids, those yellows, and those oranges, and then the anthocyanins, our reds, and our purples. So as I mentioned, a lot of these pigments are actually present in leaves year round, but what we most often see exhibited is this green chlorophyll except in autumn. But we're going to do a little activity where we're going to be experimenting with chromatography. So we're going to be using rubbing alcohol, and simple strips of coffee filters, paper coffee filters, as our chromatography paper. So I'm gonna walk you through how to set up this experiment to pull the pigments out of the leaves so you can actually see what pigments are inside of our leaves. 
So again, the things that you're going to need is some rubbing alcohol. I use the 91%. I find it works better. So when you're shopping for this, you can get different percentages in the store. So look for the one that's um, higher, the 91%. I also like to use clear glasses. Um, sometimes I use jars, um, but these are just what I had available today. You will also need a paper coffee filter. I'm going to be setting up six different ones, so I just took two filters and cut these strips out of them. So just plain coffee filters. I do like to use a little bit of tape, um, so just some transparent tape to help hold the um, coffee filters in place. And today I'm going to just be using some simple chopsticks that I have. Um, it, they were in our kitchen drawer from when we have had um, carry out Chinese food for dinner. Um, so I'm just going to be using these. But I also find, especially with, um, with students and with youth, that pencils work really well because they have edges. So they don't tend to roll off the glasses. But again, this is what I have today. But again, toothpicks, you just need something that's going to fit across the top of your glass, that's all you really need. So toothpicks, skewers, even just regular sticks that you find in the yard, all of those will work great. Now to set this up, you can also do it a couple of different ways. So what I'm going to do for our first one is I'm just gonna take some of these green hickory leaves here. Do you remember what kind of pigment we would expect to see in our green hickory leaves. That's right, we would expect to see chlorophyll, so that green pigment. So I like to crush them up really well first, and that just kind of, I feel like it just kind of gets the juices flowing and kind of bruises the leaves a little bit. And then you're going to tear it up into small strips and put it in your jar or your cup or whatever you're using and you don't need to fill up the whole thing with leaves just like two leaves and these are pretty big hickory leaves so we're just going to use two and then I also like to just kind of take whatever stick I'm using just kind of mash them so if you think about cooking it's kind of like muddling and then you're going to pour just enough of that rubbing alcohol in there to cover up your leaves. Now, of course, since we're using rubbing alcohol, you don't want it to be doing this near any flame. And if you're having kids set this up, you might want to wear some safety goggles or some glasses just for safety measures. So again, I'm just kind of mixing this up really good in there. And you can see I didn't put a lot of rubbing alcohol in there just a couple tablespoons. You don't want to fill it really full. You don't need that much. And again, I'm just kind of mushing this around a little bit in here. All right. Just kind of get it done good in there. So we're basically kind of creating a solution. And the rubbing alcohol is going to help pull the pigments out of there. So then really simply, tear off a piece of the tape first, just a little piece because we don't need a lot, just a little bit to help hold it on there. I'm going to take this and wrap it around my stick or my pencil or whatever I'm using. And you just need it to go down into the solution just a little bit. So I always put just a little bit of tape on here just to keep it from unwinding. I'm just going to kind of set it in there just so that it's right inside of the solution. You might want to take one of your other ones and just kind of push it down in there well. And then we're going to set it aside. A lot of times when I do this too, just so I can remember, I'm going to take this hickory leaf and I'm going to put it next to this um, cup here so I can remember when we look at our results later what leaf was in here. So I'm going to set this one aside. So again, this is just our green hickory leaf. And so if we we're going to guess what we might see in that, we might guess that we're going to see that green pigment, that chlorophyll, come out on our chromatography strip. Um, and then we also might guess, here's one that I also pulled off that same tree, and we can see it's starting to exhibit 
some of those carotenoid pigments, especially those xanthophylls, those yellow pigments. So I'm guessing that we might see some of those come out on the paper as well, but we will see. So I'm also gonna set up a couple other ones here. So I think I'm gonna do some of these really pretty maple leaves, and I might, I've got a couple different ones here. So I'll put some, a green one in with this orange one here. And then I've got a mix of these locust leaves, so some that are green and yellow. So I'm gonna set one of those up. And then I've got some, we'll do some of these purple ones, these anthocyans. I also have another ornamental tree that's got some really pretty purples in it. So we'll do that in one. I also really like the sumac. I've had really good results with sumac. So we're gonna do some with the sumac as well. And here I've got a really pretty yellow. We got a couple of these yellow um, maple leaves. So I'm going to do some, one of those. Oh, and I forgot that I had these oak leaves as well. So we might do one with these oak leaves too. So we will just kind of wait and see how it goes. So again, I'm going to be setting up six different cups with um, our chromatography paper and our rubbing alcohol and our different leaves. So here is our little experiment all set up. So you can see all the different glasses here. Then I have the type of leaf so I can remember what is in the jar. Now I'm going to basically let this sit here. Usually three or four hours is enough but I'm not in any hurry, so I'm gonna actually let them sit overnight. So we will come back tomorrow and check on these and see what we're seeing on our chromatography paper. So I want you to think about what you might expect to see on each one of these, knowing what leaves have gone into the glasses. So what would you expect? And if you're doing this at home, you can write this down in a journal, maybe draw some pictures about what you might expect to see inside of all of these when we take a look at our chromatography paper tomorrow. What do you think will happen? So again, you will check back in on these tomorrow. All right, so here we are on day two, and you can see that we have some great results. So this one here, this was that hickory leaf. That was our green and yellow. Remember, that's the chlorophyll and the carotenoid. And the leaf is pretty much dried up now. So it's really important also that you use fresh leaves for the, you can see how nice and crunchy it is now. This one here, these were those pretty um, ornamental plum leaves that we used. And so you can see we got a little bit of green and yellow in there, but those purples, those anthocyanins really, really come through well. We had also used some of the sumac, which is a little bit of that green and that red color. 
and you can see that came out really nice as well. So we can see the chlorophyll as well as the anthocyanin in that, the red color, the red pigment. This one down here, this was our locust leaves where we had some that were green and some that were yellow. So you can see those pigments have come through really nicely on that. We had a mixture of some of our oak leaves, and again, they're really dry now, but some that were kind of that red and the orange and the green in there. So you can see how those came out as well on our chromatography paper, the coffee filters that we're using for that. And lastly, we had a mixture of the maple leaves. So we had some that were green and some that were red and a little bit of yellow. You can see all those different colors have come out in here in our paper. So I think we were pretty successful overall. What do you think? I hope you've enjoyed our exploration of different types of leaf pigments and the activity that we did. Remember, our chlorophylls, our carotenoids, and our anthocyanins. I also hope that you've gained a greater appreciation for why we have all this beautiful fall color around us this time of year. I encourage you to continue your exploration by trying out different types of leaves in our activity or by seeking out different stories, poems, and folk tales that explain why the leaves change color this time of year. Feel free to leave your comments below, especially if you've tried out this activity at home. Thank you so much.